Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Nerdy Old Men Podcast. This is the old bald man, Chad. Whether you are loyal to the Emperor or you fight for the greater good, you know what we're talking about when we're talking about tabletop war games. And we are here today with always our good sidekick and co-host, Redneck Wes. Hey guys, uh, I've, I've made a new friend down here. at the. Uh, we're at the Warp, by the way, uh, and uh, uh, the kitties here that guard the place that uh, our buddy John here owns it's a it's a gaming store here in knoxville and uh it's the first time we've been here it's a really cool place and so john we're gonna throw it over to you man just uh tell us a little bit about you you know how did you get into all this awesomeness uh, thanks well first of all thank you guys for coming out and having me uh i know we've been a long time planning this episode so yeah we're excited to be here man um so uh i probably the story goes back a long way um uh, I know we don't have forever, so I'll give you the, <laughs> the bullet points. Uh, you know, I started out my teens playing D&D, &D, uh, like a lot of kids. All uh, the cool were, kids do. All the cool that kids. Our age, you know, because we, <laughs> at the time, if you had an Atari, you were lucky. You are right. Uh, or Nintendo. We had original. friends outside. That was, that was about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, you know, we used to go outside, uh, you know, take our little uh, RV guns and march through the woods and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the uh, I, I got into D&D &D and made my teens. And uh, I always loved the aspect of getting the chance to get out my childhood aggressions in a way that I couldn't kill people in real life, but yeah. I could kill them in D&D. &D. <laughs> um, and uh, one day, DM was like, hey, we're going to start using miniatures for the game. And uh, I wandered into Oak Ridge Mall, if you want to oh, call that yeah. a real get, thing. Oh, yeah. Did you go to Game Board? I did go to Game Board. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I went to Game Board and uh, uh, got to know the guy, Jamie, that was running it at the time. Uh, decent guy and uh, <clears throat> he got me he showed me some miniatures and uh, you know I was looking at D&D &D stuff and, the, and then uh, I saw uh, Dark Elves and I was playing a Dark Elf character for uh, Warhammer okay. uh, Warhammer Fantasy um, and I was like oh man these miniatures so that's kind of what got me hooked on miniatures uh, started painting shortly thereafter trying to learn how to paint and uh, you know like most people I started off with Horrible, horrible. Right. Some yes. of us still are. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself, Wes. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, 10,000 miniatures painted later, you know, uh, or however many, I don't even know. Like, I was about to say, do you, do you even keep count? <laughs> no. <laughs> I did, there for a while, I didn't. Half time, I don't even remember to take pictures of my commissions anymore because I'm just like, <laughs> oh, next one's done. On to the next guy. Um, but, yeah, I uh, basically, I had, had always had a love for hobby. Uh, I did some. Uh, <clears throat> Early on, it, terrain building was kind of my thing. Uh, I was a better terrain builder than I was a miniature painter. And uh, I did some uh, up in Michigan, where I'm from. Uh, I did a, a couple train tables for some guys. It was just, you know, I just laid out all the basics and left it nice and level so they could run their tracks and run their trains. And I was like, man, I can't believe how much these guys will pay me to like build stuff out of foam for them. And uh, it kind of just became a you know, like I'm working my normal job, and then at my time off, I was building Out stuff in the garage, stuff. building yeah. building trains. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, eventually, I actually did a uh, tour of duty working for Games Workshop. Really? In Michigan, they used to have three stores in my local area, and uh, when they interviewed me, it was you know like it, you go through your typical job interview type stuff. They got all those questions. It's just generic. You know, read from the sheet. Right. You know, like how would you deal with this customer issue or whatever. Uh, and then they're like, well, let's see some of your work. So I brought in a couple of miniatures, and, and honestly, I, I could see the disappointment in the guy's face. Really? He's like, oh, he's like, you're such a great candidate, but oh, your painting sucks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but gee, then, thanks. But then I brought some of the terrain out of the box, and he's like, oh. Like, Hang on a minute. There's your niche right there. there. There's, yeah. your, there's your uh, skill set in life, kid. Uh, so they, they hired me based on my terrain, That's not based awesome. on my painting skills. Well, I mean, trains can really, you know, set the stage for a, uh, you know, like a tabletop game. Like you're, uh, I mean, you've got several set up now, and I mean, it's really cool because I know Chad and I've played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons over the years, and it's I know Chad to steal your line, it's the theater of the mind, mm. and but when you've actually got something that you can see on the board, and I mean. Chad, you're like me. You're a tactical guy. You start going, oh, okay, okay, we can use this, and 
we're going to do this and to have the actual miniature interacting with the, the terrain the model that you made brings it more to life yeah and so yeah. to you know i can really appreciate the work that you've done you know because i'm like i i'm into stuff like that yeah right so, so you get so you're doing you got a job at games workshop build because of your terrain building yeah because of my terrain building and that gave me an opportunity um to really learn some better painting techniques the, the particular guy that was the uh uh, general manager at the time, he was a Golden Demon participant. I don't know if he ever won a Golden Demon, uh, but he was exceptional. And uh, he taught me some techniques, and uh, I got plenty of practice, because one of your things you do is they're like, okay, well, we're opening a new store, so we need a new store army for this store, <laughs> wherever. Yeah. So here's, you know, 3,000 points of the Blood Angels we need you to paint. Wow. And so that was, you know, it's like, okay, well... Uh, you, you learn pretty fast through repetition. Getting to the zone and doing it over yeah, and over. Learning how to assembly line for standard troops and stuff was really important technique to learn, not to try to make everybody a character. Right. Um, and I and it, even now, I still, my, most of my stuff, like I still got so much stuff unpainted, as most of us do. Yeah. Bio shame is a real thing. <laughs> right. Uh, but still buy more miniatures. Absolutely. You uh, never have too many. Yeah, you always need to do stuff. But, uh, yeah, the... Um, I learned uh, one of the little trick, trick techniques he taught me was he's like, if you got a unit of 20 guys, because you know, back then you still had the big blocks of fantasy rank and files, he's like, paint everybody to just game table standard. And then the front rank of that unit, do a little bit better. Okay. Like, so you paint the front the five guys front or whatever. You see. Right, so suddenly all those guys behind it look better. Just ah. because it's, it's like a... So nobody, visual, nobody goes visual and says, trick. Look, nobody says look, let me look here, the rank three middle of the pile yeah. <laughs> spearmen. They're like, oh, look at that standard bear. It's awesome. Red shirt number five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have the detail. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so that was kind of one of those little techniques he, he taught me. Now, of course, now that everything's more skirmish style and less rank and file, uh, now I take longer than I need to to get everything simple and painted. But, <laughs> but uh, no, I, so... I worked for GW for a while, and uh, uh, it was actually not too bad. I mean, you got a pretty good discount. Uh, mm-hmm. Got to do what I loved every day, but there was always that sense that, yeah, if they did things a little differently, it would be so much cooler. You know, right. and with with most corporations, big business, you go to work for a big business, and you're always like, hey, I got this great idea. And they're like, shut up and do what we tell you. Yeah, we, we have the plan. <laughs> so, do not deviate from the plan. Yeah, do not, do not so you had your ideas of the way things you wanted to do. So is yeah. that how it ended up well, started to transition? That kind of planted the seed. Yeah. You know, that seed was in my mind. I kept thinking, man, if I if I had a hobby shop, I would do this, I would do this, I would do this. And But, you know, I had all the ambition and all the ideas. I just didn't have, I was too not focused uh, at that point in my life, uh, my early 20s. So I, uh, you know, I just continued doing what a lot of guys do. I just got a job and worked a job, worked a different job, you know, whatever it was that I needed to do. Till something drove me crazy, and then I found another job. Right. And uh, but I ended up spending between then and now, I spent you know 25, 30 years in doing retail. So uh, at some level or another, so I've worked for GameStop, I worked for Office Depot, I worked for Hobby uh, Hobby Town, I worked for I don't know, I got as many jobs probably in the past as as uh, I have miniatures now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, the one thing that 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 was all beneficial. That all led to this this point because I spent so much time learning retail trade, yeah. how to merchandise a store, how to talk to your customers, how to treat people with you know respect. They walk in the door, they're wearing pajamas. That doesn't mean they're not going to spend thousand mm. dollars. Right. You don't yeah. judge them based on that. And uh, and I, I kind of fell in love with the, just doing retail because it just worked. Uh, it fit with me. Somebody liked to talk. Uh, and then. Uh, but there was other things along the way that kind of guided me to this specific retail. And that came from uh, miniature painting, which originally I was, and I tried to tell my customers this, don't, you know, don't expect to like learn how to paint today and then tomorrow you're entering the crystal brush. <laughs> uh, because it doesn't happen. And no matter how good you get, no matter how much talent you have, I promise you, I can show you somebody who's better. Yeah, yeah that's, so, that's like college That's with everything, yeah. 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 yeah, so you always, you know, I always look at superior artists uh, to inspire me to learn how to do what they did or to get ideas or 
And that's what I always tell people to do. Just, you know, look at other people's work. Don't be discouraged when you look at their model and you're like, oh, my God, he's so much better than me. Keep in mind that he's showcasing that one portfolio model that's supremely awesome. And you're looking at the entirety of your army, which is half plastic gray. Right. Um, so you, you can't compare yourself to that. But what you do is you learn from, from that. But, but yeah, miniature painting for commission, that ended up being a thing. So my time at GW really advanced my skills quite a bit. And then I just started, you know, painting minis and selling them on eBay back when uh, not everybody was a pro painter, according to eBay. <laughs> uh, and it, it was just, you know, a side hustle to make some money. And uh, there were times when I, you know, like I get laid off from a job or whatever, and I would just paint minis because I could still make money on that all day long. Right. Um, and then 2018, I really started going heavy into commission painting and uh and about midway through i left you know i would recently worked for comcast and you know that took years off my life <laughs> uh, doing tech support oh, oh gosh yeah we go ahead and apologize that, now that alone is yeah. bad no matter who it's for yeah i'm sorry i'm not that guy you hated <laughs> i'm the guy i actually fix your stuff uh, but usually you know the whole the whole thing would start with me you know first um saying it's okay that you called my mom what you call her and that you hate me hate comcast but i'm gonna fix your stuff uh, but you know and of course that this call center work in general is, is so high stress so um eventually i was i got out of there and i was like i just got to do something else went back to school started doing photography um and i kind of had a love of doing macro photography which yeah, fit yeah. of course with miniatures because Absolutely. take yeah. pictures of minis and I was selling, the better the pictures are, the better they look on the eBay. People buy them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a jack of all trades. I also did like food photography because I like to cook. There you go. And so yeah. you plate something up really nice and uh, take a picture of it. And everybody's like, oh, this guy's open a restaurant. No, mm -hmm. not really. I'm not that good of a cook. <laughs> I, just, I just make it look good. But you have, you have this affinity for, for art. I mean, yeah. whether it be painting or photography, you, you like to dabble in in that area oh yeah yeah I, uh there's very few art forms that i have come across that i don't like right um you know i i've done everything from sculpting large scale and small scale to canvas painting to miniature painting to uh instruments playing instruments uh my my family lineage on my dad's side is very artistic uh, a couple of my cousins are got their own bands one of them is uh like a straight edge hardcore uh, band another one is more of a paramore style yeah. uh, so he's a bard is what he's saying yeah, he's he's a bard. Bard. <laughs> I, I am actually literal literal life real life a tinker gunslinger <laughs> yes. he's, he's, he's got so many different uh, he's uh, multi-class very multi-class yes. there yeah i'm the i'm the guy that's one sixteenth of everything there you go there you go uh it's the guy you need yeah you can do it all <laughs> so I mean, we could talk about McDonald's and food, and we could talk about particle physics if you want. So there we go. All right. Uh, All right. I know a little bit about everything and uh, a lot about nothing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. So the store here, man. How, how did that? I mean, we kind of got the backstory of your love for this this type of thing, which we really appreciate. Uh, but how did all this come to be? Yeah. Well, where that's did the where work come from. Well, I find with photography is. Uh, you know, as things change, people get these new phones, iPhones that got great cameras and this stuff. And we have a lot of what we call photographers, F A U X photographers. Okay. Um, and it makes it really hard because people don't understand the quality when when you pay for somebody to be a professional photographer, when you pay for professional prints, how much better it is than doing the cell phone printing at Walmart. Right. Um, not. That you know, that's fine. That's great for your family snapshots and stuff, but that's not professional photography. But people don't really know the difference. So when they look at somebody willing to pay, says, oh, yeah, just charge me 50 bucks and I'll take your family photos for like 12 hours uh, versus somebody that says, oh, yeah, pay me 50 bucks and I'll give you 15 minutes right. uh, and 10 prints. Um, they, it's, it's hard to sell that, you know, and especially in the era, uh, non modern days where people, where cameras actually do take pretty good photos. But they're still, you know, that's a whole other can of worms with right. through a separate podcast on right. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah so eventually I realized that photography 
in this market here in Knoxville is very challenging because there's just so many people out there that are, you know, quote, doing photography. Uh, so I wasted, you know, 35 grand going to Pellissippi and getting a degree in something that's not worth the paper it's printed on. Uh, probably learned more about photography on YouTube than I did at school. Right. Um, but anyhow, uh, so I fell back on what I loved, miniature painting. And uh, since I was going to school and I wasn't working a full-time job, then I just had a part-time job, I started painting heavier for miniatures. And then uh, I met Mick at the Warhammer store. Uh, he's Of course, he's not there now anymore. Uh, but he and I kind of hit it off fairly reasonably and he introduced me to a couple people that that like to get commission painting done and it kind of took off from there and then uh 2019 i probably did about somewhere between 15 and 20 thousand in commissions wow. but i was doing it as a full-time job i That's mean awesome. I, was, I wasn't painting 40 hours a week i was painting more like 120 hours a week but but I loved it. Wow. You know, I was fixing to say you enjoy that. Though, yeah, I enjoyed like. what I was doing. So I, there was that that challenge just to get that next job lined up and like finish this job. And uh, one of my first jobs I did for one of my new clients that Mick had introduced me to uh, was four main blades. So that was job one. And uh, since I was the one who owned the main blades, I sold them my main blades and they painted them. It was like a thousand dollar job just wow. right there. That's awesome. And. Uh, you know, and that became one of my most reliable clients. Uh, he's a doctor, so he's, he uh, could fund commission painters and obviously didn't have any time to paint himself. He, if he had time, he wanted to play. Right. Uh, so I, I loved it. I embraced it, and I started, you know, working my working my butt off doing it. And I was afraid I was going to get burned out, but I never really did. But somewhere along the lines, uh, you know, I put together some money and, and uh, took an advance on future commissions from that you know, same person, and uh, put that all together and ended up with about 10 grand. And uh, I said, you know what? I think it's finally going to happen. Like, I can, I can run a store. I can, and there's a lot of other things that transpired by going to different places around town. There's mm -hmm. not a place to game. There's not a place that doesn't have any selection. There, you know, like, there's always something that if they would just do this, the store would be awesome. Right. And, uh, and of course, that's my opinion. Uh, for what it was worth, but you know, there some of the places in play, town that I went to, which which I love a lot of those places and a lot a lot of the people that that worked at them and run them, but they were all missing something. They were all missing something that you know, like there's the low hanging fruit. Everybody's got GW paints. Everybody's got D and D stuff. Everybody's got Vallejo, but who has Green Stuff World? Right. Who has Gamergrass? Who has Army Painter? At the time, nobody did. So, you know, a, a year and a half ago when I was getting ready to start this, my goal was to, sure, I'll carry the stuff that everybody else carries just because, you know, people are used to it and popular, but I wanted to find some of the best paints and quality, high quality stuff um, from around the world and bring it in here. And I, my dreams were sky high about what I was going to do when I opened this place. And I, I got my first taste of bitter defeat when I went to the bank. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, they got a they got a good uh, a, a good uh, chance to hammer your dreams, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah they did. They, uh, you know, I went in to apply for a loan. I I, I spent some time uh, in 2019 working with a business mentor, the mm -hmm. Score Group. What's up, Cliff? There you go. Um, he, he was very helpful, and uh, he felt like I was very much ahead of the curve because I'm kind of a perfectionist in ways mm -hmm. some things. So I had done six months of research. You know, I was on the Internet every day, how to start a business, what do you need. Trying to get need. everything lined up. Right. I wanted to walk in there and be like, okay, so what do I need to finish this? Right. And uh, it was really about helping me polish the business plan I've been working on for quite some time and researching, opening trade accounts. I had opened trade accounts six months before I had a store. I hadn't bought anything, I just had an account. And it was all in preparation, thinking, okay, I'm gonna hit the ground, I'm gonna get this loan, I'm gonna buy all this stuff, and I'm gonna have this place, and I'm gonna open it up, and it's gonna run awesome, and everybody will come here, and it'll be the greatest thing ever. And then I got to the bank, and the bank declined me for funding. Mm. Uh, and then they said, well, you know, you should probably, this, I don't wanna name a bank, because I'm kinda of bitter about this, but anyhow, uh, 
they said, well, you should open a business line of credit instead uh, because it's easier to get that than it is to get, you know, $50,000 loan or whatever. I said, okay. So I applied for that. They ran my credit again. And they did call me fat too. Huh. I was like, well, thanks for running my credit twice. <laughs> Yeah. Why, why did you suggest it when you probably should have known already? Right, you, yeah. should, you already had my score. You should have known you weren't going to improve me. But, but you know, financial market. Uh, I'm not a banker. I'm not an accountant. Those are things I have minimal, right. you know, lawyer about all those things. Uh, but uh, I am ambitious. And I am one of those people that when you make me mad, you just fill up my tank of gas. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to show you. Right. Yeah. And I am so determined to prove you wrong that I'll do whatever it takes. So I said, okay, at this point, you know, I bought my LLC and all that. And I, I mean, I was ready to go, and I looked at several buildings, uh, none of which, ironically, most of them are still vacant. They didn't mm -hmm. want to take me on because they didn't want, you know, this sort of store. And uh, all those places, hey, you could have had a year's rent. Ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so prove them wrong. I found this place. Actually, I came here uh, to go to Pizza House, my neighbor next door here. Uh, I know the owner, Justin, who owns this one of the one in cards, of course. And uh, I just love their pizza. You know, and I was coming in one day to get pizza, and I parked out here in front of the building, and I saw this section, which was a barbershop previously, uh, was available for lease. And I was like, well, hmm. let me talk to Justin and see what the landlord's like. And, I text Justin up, talk to him a little bit, and uh, he said, yeah, it's reasonable rent, but, you know, there's challenges. And I was like, okay. And I thought, okay, and I looked at it, and I looked at here, and it was this, you know, so, well, at some level it still is, but kind of a run-down mm -hmm. sort of looking vacant place. And I said, I, I don't know, it just it clicked, and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Um, yeah. So I called the guy up, was like, I want to lease this place, and, He's like, okay, and, uh, you know, when I first came in and toured the place, it was looking a little rough, and, uh, but I, I signed the lease, and I said, I got $8,000 left, well, I had $8,000, and then I signed the lease, <laughs> uh, and then I paid for KV deposits, and then I paid for Comcast, and then it's like, all of a sudden, now I'm down to, like, $4,000, but... I've already done it now, so you're in now. Uh, I'm in. So roll so, up the sleeves and get to work. Right. So I did my GW order with the first order where they, you know, the stock is racked. They send you out this predetermined stuff that goes on your rack, and they sent me out the paint rack, but I only had like six paints on it because uh, their full line of paints is like nine grand. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's not, uh, you know, if you're on a budget like I was, it was like I'm lucky to have any paint right. at that point. Uh, but that's. That was kind of it. I just said, I'm still going to commission paint because I'm going to have to. That's going to have to supplement the income while I, you know, try to get the shop going. And I literally started with about maybe $2,500 retail value of merchandise. Uh, and I said, well, here we go. And, uh, you know, got my, got my family to come in and help me paint the walls. And uh, I know when the guy, when I signed the lease, my landlord was like, well, you know, we'll give you 90 days to get open up. And, I charge you rent and stuff. Oh, that's nice. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool. And he's like, well, what are you planning to open? And I said, in about three weeks. He goes, well, you could take 90 days. I was like, no, I want to be open in three weeks. Because yeah. I'm looking at that bank account depleting. I'm right, thinking, I need yeah. to be open yesterday. Uh, and I, he's like, man, you're gonna, you're crazy. Like, it's <laughs> yep. not, there's no way it's going to happen. I'm like, you're like, like I'm going to show I'm you. Like, well, well, thank you for saying it's not going to happen because I, I'm literally going to work, you know, 15 hours a day. Yeah. And I did. Uh, for the first six months this place was open, I was I was here, you know, starting work at 9, 10 a.m. And I would work until 2, 3 in the morning. And I did it seven days a week for six months before I finally, my customers were like, dude, you need to take a day off. So literally some days I'd be sitting over here painting at my painting desk and just start falling asleep. Yeah. And they're like, dude, you need to take that off. So I finally decided, I looked at my sales over the first six months, and I'm like, well, apparently nobody shops on Tuesdays uh, because that was just one day that I never got any sales. So I said, okay, well, I'll just be closed on Tuesdays. Yep. And uh, so then I, then it turned into, well, nobody really comes in here Monday, Thursday, and Wednesday in the morning, so there's no reason to be open at you know, 10 a.m. every day. Uh, so I slid my hours back to 4 
It doesn't mean I'm not here working. It just means that... Would you get time to paint, yeah, take a nap? Take a nap, yeah. <laughs> I, I did buy the uh, Lazy Boy back here in the back for a reason. There you go. Uh, that's my, uh, my part-time living arrangement. Um, because I just spent so much time here. And, uh, you know, like I, I was telling you, Chad, when you came in today, that uh, uh, last time I saw 8 a.m., it was because I hadn't went to bed yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, we apologize for that, but but Redneck West and I are early risers, so that's why we came. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, that's fine. Man. Yeah, I, I, I it's it's actually good that we're going to do this now because you know shops not open yet, yeah. so um, we don't have people bouncing off the walls and which is a good thing. Screaming, <laughs> screaming obscenities about dice rolls. Or whatever else. <laughs> so Matt, no, this is this is cool, and I, I love the the huge team at. Thank you. I'm sitting there looking wall. at the map I, of Faerun, and I'm like, yes. hey, wait a minute. We, we're we're going to go back to Cholt. Did you see the ice of Wendell? Yes, there? I did. Yeah. I saw that one. <laughs> I actually yeah. got, uh, I've ordered a bunch of different map sets just because really? I've always liked maps. Yeah. And I don't really have a lot of you know art in here, uh, which is ironic given that this is kind of an art store in a way. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, the, the Tiamat uh, tapestry, uh, which, thank God you call her Tiamat. Most of the time I'm like, hey, have you seen the Tiamat? And they're like, who? I'm like, oh, well, those people are wrong. We've had run-ins. <laughs> those damn, people are wrong. Damn tieflings. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, I'm like Tiamat, Takesis, Queen of Dragon, Queen of you know right, yeah, yeah, Dragons. Yeah. Like, do you guys not read Dragonlance? Like, what? <laughs> What's wrong with you people? Get uh, out of our store. No, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> oh, you know, Paladin. they're fifth edition. They're fifth edition. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, Paladin. You do know he's a dragon, right? Okay. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> but then. Uh, but that and the Faerun uh, tapestries, I ordered those back in like February of uh, 2020. And uh, I was trying to get borders put on them and other stuff, and I couldn't find somebody with the sewing skills right. or sewing equipment capable of doing what I wanted to do. So a couple hundred dollars later and six months later, I said, bring it back here, and I'll stick some nails in it. Hanging on a wall. I think they done. look great. I, I think they're really cool. Thank you. And uh, some other things about the store when you look around here, um, I, I've been noticing I, I, I like basing uh, my miniatures. Obviously, my Warhammer stuff, but I do the D&D stuff as well. But right. those are some cool bases you got over here. Uh, what, game, Gamer Grass? Gamer Grass, Battle Ready Bases. Yeah, I kind of... Those are cool. You know, I again, I'm a terrain building guy, right? right? So doing a base and doing some elaborate display base is just kind of like ingrained into my brain because it's miniature, miniature terrain. Right. Uh, instead of doing a whole hill, you're just doing a little 25 millimeter hill. Uh, but I love doing that. But I also realized I got like six, seven hundred dollars in supplies to build terrain with. Not everybody wants to spend that much money to build bases, and nor do they sometimes even have the ability to do it. So. When I saw those, I was like, originally I was looking for some grass tufts, something other than just green GW grass tufts. Right. And uh, I came across Gamer Grass and established a relationship with them. They're over in, uh, oh God, you're going to kill me. I want to say they're in France. Okay. Uh, I think. It's been a while. Uh, they're at the other end of the internet order. That's what's the point, <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're on the other side of the Atlantic somewhere. <laughs> Uh, but I saw their Ballerie bases, and I'm like, oh, those look pretty cool. You know, like, well, maybe those would be good for people. They just paint their miniature, glue it on, and they're good yeah. to go. When I got them in, I was like, man, these are actually really good. Oh, and cool. I, I had some Dark Elves that I had done uh, for my army uh, back when Dark Elves was a real thing. Uh, different different era. Uh, but anyhow, I had uh, these ones like the snow and the rocks snow and grass. Yeah. That's kind of how I had done my bases, and I compared the Battle Ready base to my base. I'm like, Damn, I've got to save so much time. Yeah. And money. Oh, those are neat. Because man. they look just like the ones I did. So I was like, oh, perfect. Well, that, just... that was one thing. We had a, a friend that had a, a store for a little while, and, and first time I'd painted a miniature in a competition, and that was what everybody's like, you've got the best paint job. It's just your basing sucks. You know, and I, yeah. I'm just like, what are you talking about? You're talking about a basing. What yeah, I mean, mean? <laughs> I, I said I kind of made it look like he was coming out like some lava and stuff, and then everybody else has got, you know, like the size of this folder here, you know, <laughs> you know, like an 11 by 11 square that they're sitting down with flags and rocks and stuff, and I'm like, oh, okay, so basing is kind of important because it, it was a Warhammer miniature, and something like this would have been great because... Well, those, those are neat, and it's something I didn't know, and, and I see some, and I'm like... You know, I, 
I wish I had not glued my, my Riptide on its base. I'd rather have something like that. Yeah. yeah. Because that's the right like size. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the right size for that model. They come in all the standard sizes. Yeah. So. And I also think that if you had something like that to put your model in, it would it would inspire you to paint it better. Yeah. In order to get uh, it yeah. to match the base. Yeah, you want to get it to Or you can standard. come down and get a commission <laughs> you can paint do that job. As well, yeah. Uh, yeah, you might have to get live, though. Cause I, yes. Well, I was going to ask you about that. I don't have as much that. time anymore. I was going to ask you about that. Like, how would someone go about getting a commission for one do you still do that <laughs> yeah okay. i do still apparently do. there is a list <laughs> yes. yeah, I'm, I'm backlogged uh because obviously running the store takes 75 percent of my time at least um and i i got over on my desk over there i've got uh my current log right now uh i have well let me revisit that my original client i was telling you about that mm -hmm. that i do a lot of work for um i have an endless supply of stuff for him so when I tell you my backlog, just know he's there. Right. Uh, but rather than naming off what I have to do for him still, uh, I will skip that and just go to the smaller jobs. Um, but I have on my desk right now, I have, I'm about to finish up this weekend, some Imperial Fists Devastator Squad okay. uh, for a fella. Uh, then I have, next up will be, back on my cheat sheet board over there. Uh, <laughs> Next up is, it was originally going to be uh, Black Templars, the Indominus side of Marines plus some uh, Black Templars, but he changed his mind and decided he's a Dark Angel player now. Uh, so that will be the next job. And uh, I also have some Infinity models on painting that's kind of going along with uh, all that. Um, and then I have a Sanguinis from Forge World to paint, uh, as well as a... Uh, what is that thing over there? Uh, Captain something or another from Custodes. Uh, I don't even know what his name is. So you got you, you got some stuff there. Uh, but if somebody there's more. I if mean, somebody wanted, kinda... you know, and one one thing I'd like to do is I'd like since you, you take good pictures, of your commissions. If you could get me some of that, we'd like to post that kind of stuff. Yeah, actually, I had a there for a while. I had a Facebook page that was just for my commission painting called the Painting Crusader, mm -hmm. and uh, one of my goals when I got the shop was. I also noticed that most places don't really submit support commission painters. They, they kind of don't want you hanging around their store trying to sell your work. Hmm. Um, and, and I can, I get that, you know, uh, but at the same time as a commission painter, uh, which I, as, as we talked, still do. And I'll get you the card for that. So you yeah. can see it. Uh, but I wanted to be supportive of that part of the community too. Because those guys do provide a service for people that don't have the time or don't have the talent, but maybe have the money to be able to, you know, get something done and then want to have nice miniatures. I don't want to discourage somebody not to play the games because they're not painted. Right. I don't want to discourage somebody from not paying to have it painted because they can't paint themselves or don't don't want to or whatever. Um, so I, you know, there for a while I had a Crusaders in the Brush thing, which was kind of like a little subgroup where I kept mm -hmm. track of different commission painters. In local so that way if uh you know if, when i get backlog somebody coming to me i'll say hey you know i you can refer I, you can wait for me but it might be a couple months uh but if you want to get something done this guy's really good at getting tabletop done really fast or this guy's really great at characters or you know just you know i try to keep track of those other guys so that i can send work their way uh which you know scratches their back a little bit and it you know it keeps that customer happy, so they know they can come to me again if they need to find somebody, or, or they can just deal with that guy. Yeah, you know, you know that, and that that's a theme that, that that we've we've picked up on on the outstanding businesses that have uh, agreed to let us come in and talk to them. Is that same theme of let's work together. There's a community. It's like community. you know, yeah. I, I know like Pat over at Brickhouse. He'd said, you know, hey. Yeah, you're in my shop. I may not have this, but I can send you to this here, place. Yeah. and they've got it. Or yeah, and that and, that's cool that you're helping, you know, other guys out. And you know, kinda... so we, we have seen that theme in this yes. uh, in this gaming nerd geek, whatever you want to call it, pop culture type of uh, uh, businesses. We've seen that same thing. So one of your business, or one of the things that you do for your business, is you do do some commission painting, but you obviously have the store here, and with all this really cool stuff, tell us other things. You've got some gaming tables here, so how does that work out for your players, for uh, your customers? Well, I mean they're open gaming. Uh, I, the one, pretty much everybody is welcome here. So race, religion, gender, whatever, uh, 
come on in. You know, once you once you step through those doors, we're all battle brothers, and we all hate each other equally. Uh, so. Unless you're fourth edition D and D, and then we all hate you. <laughs> what, fourth edition? What's that? We don't talk, yeah, we don't talk about that stuff. Uh, but yeah, so you know, people want to come in. The uh, conquest has been taken off pretty good. Um, you know, it's I'm not going to say it's not going to replace Games Workshop anytime soon, but but Parabellum makes a, a pretty fun game uh, with cool miniatures and then reasonably priced. Uh, but it, and it kind of has that more nostalgic Warhammer feel, like mm-hmm. where you're ranking finals. Um, but, you know, that game's been pretty good. Um, I'm off track. Uh, the tables, gaming tables. They're open gaming tables. Uh, so if you want to come in and play, play whatever you want. No, uh, no. I don't require people. I mean, you come in here and play, you're not required to buy anything. Uh, you don't have to pay a membership fee. There's none of that stuff. Uh, it's always nice if you pick up some sodas or whatever, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, or anything, but it's not required. Uh, well, I was going to ask you: is, is, Do you have to reserve a table, or is it just, hey, there's table open, help yourself? Uh, normally, you don't have to reserve tables, and of course, I got the two big ones and the one small one in here now. I did have previously had four big ones, but they're being rebuilt, uh, which I kind of mentioned to you before the yeah. show. Um, and these will get rebuilt as well uh, once those first two come in, and I'll be back up to six tables. And honestly, and of course, I got these two big folding tables which could go away uh, to be replaced by those gaming tables or come out if we need to do Magic Tournament or D&D or whatever. Right. Uh, but uh, no, you don't need to reserve it. You just come by during my store hours and you can play it. And I'm not that guy that's like, oh, it's 10 o'clock. Get out. Right. You right. know, like if your game runs over a little bit, it's not a big deal. Unless I have some place to go, which I'll let you know in advance. Right. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's reasonable. That's fair enough. Yeah, I mean, that's fair what are your big uh, gaming uh, days or nights? Well, what's uh, the busy days for people coming into play? Well, the busiest days are, are the weekend days. Uh, Friday, without a doubt, is going to be busy because I have a pretty big D&D group that comes in, and they also play Magic, and they also play everything, Games Workshop, and they also play Conquest. So those guys are into everything. And they're so you pop- can pretty much walk in, and there's yeah, any number Fridays, of games that's going on Friday night. Fridays after 4 or 5 p.m., it, it usually gets pretty busy. Uh, Saturdays is kind of the same way, except it's sometimes it's hit or miss. Uh, especially if there's new releases coming out. Right. Uh, then the Saturday crowd is definitely here. And then sometimes there won't be many people, just people coming to buy stuff and then leave. Uh, and Sundays is kind of the same. Uh, same like Fridays, where we got you know, a fair amount of people come in and play games. People are really loving a uh, crusade version of 40K now. Yes. Uh, so there's a kind of unofficial league going here. Uh, it started off as kind of official. Um, we're using a website called administratum.net, which I don't know if you're familiar with it, no. but it's uh, it is beautiful for keeping track of your crusade army. It keeps track of your battles, keeps track of your rewards or your penalties for battle traits and stuff. Uh, so we were we're using that to kind of keep track of the games, uh, and it's also a build grow and paint so there's a limitation in this particular one we're doing that if you want to add reinforcements your initial part of your army has to be painted okay yeah to at least table standard and that way at the end of this whole thing when we get to whatever point we stop at you're going to have one or two fully painted armies which is which is pretty cool And, and since we're doing two lists alternating lists it gives you a chance to not get burned out painting Necrons because you only paint 25 power level of Necrons, right. and then you're painting Demons. Right. So you get to paint something else, and you're not looking at stupid Necrons anymore. And yeah. then when you're done with stupid Demons, you go back to stupid Necrons. Yeah, see, <laughs> it, 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 that, that's the kind of thing. That's one thing about painting D&D miniatures because you can do all kinds of different stuff. Warhammer, you got to be a, a little more focused. Like I've got a, I've got you know, 2,000 plus points of Tau that I've been painting, and that, and I do a white you know, the, the traditional white paint uh, scheme. So it gets on my nerves after a while. But I have bought some, I bought a Thousand Suns um, start collecting box because right. those guys are vastly different. And I thought, ah, that'd be kind of cool. So that doing the Crusade thing the way that you guys have got it set up, it's a pretty neat, it's a pretty neat thing. That's, that's why I like painting Battletech miniatures because, like, no, you, you, can a, paint, you can paint mechs, whatever. He was an old school, <laughs> he was an old school Battletech guy. Him, <laughs> him and Jason, who's been on the show a few times, they're, they're old school Him and stupid Bushwhacker. <laughs> We do, we do got a couple guys that are uh, interested in Malatek that I think buy models, but I've never seen them play it up here. Uh, I, I think that's kind of like, 
I don't know. It's kind of like D and D used to be back in the day. Like you, you get together with your friends, you play D and D, and then you go out in public, and you never heard of it. Yeah, <laughs> which no, is totally that, different now. Yeah. Well, it's, it's different. You know, it's yeah. different now. Yeah. It's the but mainstream. Back in the day, yeah. Oh, thank goodness for Stranger Things. They introduced us to this game D and D. What? Yeah, it's uh, like yes. yeah. Okay, wait. This game just came out. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just been. Have you heard of this too. thing? You know, <laughs> called Dungeons and Dragons. It's really cool. Oh, well, uh, well, you know what? Uh, you, you know, we we've talked about the store and everything here, and we know that 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 uh, John is clearly a motivated and talented artist. But is he talented enough to survive the nerdy old man rapid fire question session? Dun, dun, dun. I guess we'll find out. Yes, we're going to find out today, <laughs> sir. And uh, Wes, you can begin. Uh, John, if you've seen our show or listened to our show, rather, before. We're sorry. We, like to, oh, yeah, uh, we, I mean. <laughs> we, we apologize heavily for that initially, but we also like to ask some silly little questions. So first thing pops up to your head, just throw it out there. Okay, I got, I got a, I'll throw him off of the softball question here. Marvel or DC? Both. Is that an option? I think that is. That's an yeah, yeah, I, I think, think it's a fair option. option. That way, Wes and I don't get into a fist, a fist fight here <laughs> in a minute. Do I get this. to expand on that answer? Absolutely. Go ahead. If you want, so, yeah. Yes. Marvel. Our rapid fire questions really aren't rapid fire, no, but you not. know we go. With it. <laughs> like you're going to spit a question at me really fast, and I can answer it over the course of an hour. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so DC uh, is a love hate relationship. I love a lot of the characters: Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. I love those characters. A lot of the movies have been okay. Well, been wow, that's being real. very generous. <laughs> They're okay. The, the, movies, the movies are okay. Uh, what I actually liked was like the CW shows. Yes. And, uh, you know, like Flash and Arrow in particular kind of got me into... I think I got a lot of people into it. Yeah, yeah and it, it's that's where the hate comes in because you like what you got in the CW. You got four or five seasons or something, and they're like, The Flash! And it's a different guy. Yeah. Uh, it's like, no, like, dude, I'm so used to this guy. Yeah. You, you can't just, like, make a different guy be the Flash now. Uh, and that's that's where my love hate comes in. And then, of course, they, they have this, uh, you know, like, Christian Bale, uh, the, the Batman trilogy with Christian Bale and uh, Chris Nolan. Fantastic. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. And then they're like, oh, well, Christian Bale's not doing it anymore, so let's get Ben Affleck. What? Yeah. Did you see Daredevil? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which anyway. version of Daredevil? Yeah. Uh, well, the Ben Affleck version. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm talking about the director's cut or the uh, the uh, theatrical release. Cause there was there was two versions. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they, they tried to fix a lot of stuff with the director's uh, cut. No thanks. But then then we talk. Now we're Daredevil. We're talking Marvel. So back then, you know, Marvel was I don't know. It, it was a joke. Maybe it, those guys. Maybe DC movies now is. What well, Marvel, Marvel movies, movies were in the, the late '80s yes. and the '90s, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now Marvel is obviously a juggernaut. Um, and uh, the Daredevil series, the Netflix series, was just awesome. I loved it. It was very gritty, very dark. Mm. The Punisher, I, I was a little, I was a little hold off on John Barenthal. Ah, yeah, uh, yes, uh, because I hated his character in Walking Dead. <laughs> And I was like, I don't, I don't know that I want this douchebag playing the Punisher. Well, well that's Frank, why. Frank, Frank's bigger than 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 uh, John, and because John's, he, he's a little feller. And I yeah, just, he's a little dude, but but he played the role. He, he did. He he did the comics. I mean, he he went to the comics as as inspiration. And I think he did the character justice. Yeah, and uh, you know, obviously there have been other Punisher movies. I did like Thomas Jane, um, and you know, he had a little bit more size. He was more. Size appropriate. Yeah, at the time. I didn't. I didn't particularly care how they did the the story. You know, I wanted more of the. Yeah, it was very PG. Yeah, uh, as compared to the Punisher, supposed to be raw and gritty and angry, uh, kind of like Spawn. When they did the Spawn movie, it was just it was laughable because yeah, it, it anybody who read the comic books was like that. This is so yeah. stripped down. Uh, but yeah, so Marvel obviously once they started with the Netflix and then started getting Iron Man going, as one of those other movies, uh, it went to a whole stratosphere all its own. So DC has done okay trying to keep up, but they they still are making the same mistakes. So now they lost Ben Affleck, so let's get Edward from Twilight to play Batman, <laughs> the skinny Edward from Twilight. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, they just keep spiraling out of control. <laughs> I, under- I understand that you can make these suits and make them look buff, but I mean that dude's not buff. Read, I mean, read DC Black Label comics if you want DC the way it should be. Yeah, very gritty. All right, what you got there, Chad? Number two, uh, Kirk or uh, Picard? 
Uh, well, I guess we're going to have to say which version of Kirk and which version of Picard. There's only one version of Kirk. Yeah. The, the, well, ori- the, original. <laughs> the original. Take the movie. <laughs> take, <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell, television show. Uh, you know, I like Picard for... I, I really like Next Generation. That was kind of like my... My, uh, that was our Star Trek, I yeah, guess. Yeah, that was our Star Trek because, obviously, the uh, original Star Trek series was before I was even born. Right. Uh, but there's no doubt that William Shatner played, uh, you know, he was a badass, a lover, yes. a fighter. He, everybody wanted to be Kirk because, yes. you know, he got all the green alien chicks. Uh, <laughs> he'd kick anybody's butt. Yep. Right. Uh, and, you know, he was, he was a good tactician. But, obviously, we're talking acting that... Not very impressive compared to Sir Patrick Stewart. Obviously, yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, Picard was a different type of enigma. I like the fact he was more mysterious. He was more tactical. He had his Kirk. That was Riker. Yes. Riker was Who the guy. Who he would send away on, on away missions, you know, because he was, I'm going to stay on the ship. You yes. go in there and do that crap. <laughs> yeah, R- Riker could do the fighting. Riker got all the girls. So yeah. he was the Kirk to Picard. Yes. Uh, and, and it's very different than Spock, because Spock, you know, he was... Well, Spock was Data, and it's kind of a mismatch in that way. But uh, if I had to choose one, uh, I think I would probably watch The Next Generation over the original Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Kirk was more of an iconic character to me than Picard was. I like it. I like it. Wes? That's, that, that's, that's a good one. Okay. If you get to be in a sci-fi series, movie, TV, whatever, what series are you, are you jumping into? All right, are we talking about actually be in the series? Yes, yeah, like you, you, you live, live in that oh, universe. You live there. Oh, Firefly for sure. Yes, yes! I, uh, shiny. I, 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 are we going to be bad guys? We're going to be bad guys. Let's be bad guys. <laughs> well, they're not bad guys. They're just not good guys. Let's be yes. bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I love uh, I love Firefly. The dynamics of it, I it broke my heart. Uh, uh, it did everybody. It Fox. Fox. Jeez, Fox. Vizo, we know you're listening. Reboot. That's, a, that, that's another <laughs> Continuation outboard. something. Give us something. All right, so we'll jump into the realm of this store. Imperium, Xenos, or Chaos? Well, uh, Xenos. Yes. I, uh, yes. Because I'm a Necron player, uh, I used to be you know, a Smurf player, mm-hmm. uh, but I was never a For the Emperor kind of guy at the table and spewing propaganda. And we can always go into why my theory is the Emperor's actually the bad guy in the universe. I agree with you. I play Tau. Okay. <laughs> For the greater good. Wes? I, I, don't, I don't play that, so I, 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 I have no... Uh, yes. Wes is staring off at the wall right uh, now. What? <laughs> Who? All right, Wes. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. This, this is... I'm, I'm going to steal one of yours, Chad. Go ahead, I like, sir. I'm about to say, I like how you're looking at your sheet. Yeah. Like, you've got the questions, but there's no it, questions. There's no there. questions. There's no questions there. He, he's I a make good actor. notes. Uh, <laughs> it's improv. <laughs> you realize this is, like, audio. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. can see you. Uh, <laughs> look at that. But, no, uh, Chad always likes to use this one, but you're you're stuck on a four-hour car ride. The radio does not work. You get to pick a supervillain or a superhero to ride with you. Who are you picking? A superhero or a supervillain? Um, oh man, that you're stuck. Was, you're stuck with them in the car, and you just got. No, I mean, there's no radio. Them. There's no nothing. You just uh, you're on this road trip. Gosh, that that was one I was not prepared for. <laughs> See, that's um, a good one. Then it throws him off even more because I asked it. That's right. Well, it's it's certainly going to be a villain because I've always villains are cooler. I've always appealed more to villains because Absolutely. they're tortured characters, tortured souls. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why they're a villain, and it's. A lot of times, it's they're stigmatized as villains, but they're people too. Yes. Um, go villains. Yes. Um, I think probably, I wouldn't want somebody psychopathic like the Joker. I would be able to have a conversation with him. No. Um, I wouldn't want somebody like Doctor Doom, who's a total megalomaniac and egotistical. <laughs> uh, yeah. As Wes shows his, his I mean, screen on his phone, it's Doctor Doom. There's no doubt he's a badass, but uh, you know I. He I just th- wants to rule the world. I mean, <laughs> you know, Thanos, not really, because first of all, he takes up too much leg room in the car. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I think it would have to be. God, I mean, that's that's such a tough one. Uh, I probably would enjoy a ride with Magneto. There you go. I like that, Magneto. Just 
Keep him calm so you don't crush the car. Well, just because, <laughs> obviously... He's he, not really a bad guy. He just wants to protect his people. Well, look what he's been through, too. That's true. You know, yeah. It's, it's, no, that that's why I like that's why I like villains and stuff, too. That's, that's why, you know, he's hanging on the wall in my bedroom. And my my wife was gracious enough. I have a, a, a Jim Lee uh, Magneto poster in a metal frame. Uh, hanging, yeah. All right, so. my last question, then, Wes, you can bring it home. My last question is, the greatest 1980s cartoon television series ever. Oh, he made it the best. They've done it. <laughs> yes. I freaking Chad have the power. Chad gets a win. <laughs> Woo. I, all right. I, I could have said G.I. Joe or Transformers. But all of those, those are good were, answers. They all would have been correct. Yes. Ba- back when they actually made cartoons that were cartoons. That's, you're absolutely correct. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. But, uh, yeah, that probably He-Man yes, for sure. Absolutely. I wanted to be He-Man. Uh, I mean, who didn't? Yeah, I like Skeletor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did like Skeletor uh, and all his, you know, Minions that were completely inept. Poor Absolutely. Skeletor. It's no wonder you can never take... If Skeletor's minions were half as good as He-Man's minions, then yeah, he either. probably took over the world. That's right. Bring okay. us home, Wes. Okay, last question I've got is, does pineapple go on a pizza? Well, sure, you can put it on a pizza. Not pizza I'm going to eat. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that yeah, answer. Yeah. Him <laughs> and Pat from Brickhouse <laughs> both said no, sir, to that one. I mean, uh, it doesn't it doesn't offend me if somebody does pineapple on a pizza, but I just, I, I like pizza. I'm a very traditionalist with pizza. Yeah. Pepperoni, I'm good. There you or, go. Or you can do all the meats if I feel extravagant, but... Yeah. <laughs> You know, I try to stay away. My mama told me vegetables are the devil. <laughs> so I try to stay away from stuff that grows. I love it. Uh, just so, give me some meat and cheese. We're good. There you hey. go. So, John, we, we want to thank you for, for letting us come down to your awesome store and talk to you today. And uh, so just one more thing before we kind of close things out. What's next for the Warp? Uh, well, it's it's always evolving. And uh, as I told you before the show, my customers will come in here and say, dude, you like rearrange the store again. Uh, every couple of weeks, if I can add something, I'm going to add it. And I will find a place to put it. This is kind of a small store, 1,000 square feet. Uh, but what's next for me is when this place gets filled up and I've got stuff, when I got this kind of the way I want it, uh, then I want, a, I want a bigger place. Uh, my original plan, way back when I did my business plan, um, you know, they say the best laid plans, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I had this elaborate business plan. It called for like 4,000 square feet or more, four times the size. And uh, I wanted to get to the point where I could host, you know, big tournaments. You know, not, not necessarily like a grand tournament, but, you know, 20 players, yeah. you know, 10 tables or more. And uh, this, this space is what I could afford with the budget I was on. Yes. Uh, the space is still what I could afford with the budget I'm on. Uh, but... Obviously, you see, you know, from the amount of stock I have in stock, that my cost is it's my customers. I mean, I work a lot, but man, I got such a great loyal following of people, and they make this thing happen. And I just, I just, I'm willing to take the sacrifice. I'm not taking a paycheck. I'm a small business owner. It's what what you do. Yeah. Uh, but every penny I make, I'm putting right back in here, uh, yeah, because I, I want to keep adding stock. I want to keep adding product. I want I want to keep running contests. I want to do things for my community. Outstanding. No, that's that we, we get that yeah. same vibe from every small business owner that we talk to. I mean, uh, it, it goes back to that whole the community. It's all yeah. about that community. And and guys, if if you're listening, if you're looking for a game store, uh, whether it be Warhammer or D and D minis, whatever it is, come down here check this place out. I mean. There's a lot of stuff. There's a couple of cool cats. I'm not a cat guy, but they've been real friendly. Yep, yep. Uh, but I mean, if you're looking for a place to play. Come here. And I'm telling you this, yes, we've talked some some Warhammer stuff, and there's a lot of Warhammer stuff here, and that's kind of the theme of some of these tables and stuff like that, but you can come and play other things. These these miniature bases here, I'm looking at them. Some of them are urban, but some of them fall right in line with sticking a dang orc on top of it. I'm sitting there looking. And, there's and, some that and, I've and, and, been and eyeing. Here. I'm telling you, man, come check this place out. And all you guys that are local to the Knoxville metropolitan area, uh, you know, take the tour of these stores that have let Nerdy Old Men Podcast come in. Come down here and check out John and his store. At least walk in and take a look around. I guarantee you, you're going to find something that you like. And if it's not here, I might be able to order it, too. There you go. I got a lot of vendor accounts that I don't even have anything from them yet. I got, uh, well, some things you can't see. Like, I got artist opus brushes behind the counter over there. Um, That's awesome. I don't have a display for them. They're just kind of sitting on that shelf over there. But, yeah. You know. 
tell me what you need. I'll, yeah. I'll try to see if That's I can awesome. get it. Well, let's get do the contact information off his wicked awesome card. All right, all right. We are at seven two one five Clinton Highway, Suite B, uh, Hirton Powell, and the phone number is eight six five seven or excuse me two seven five six eight five three. Uh, you're on Facebook at the Warp Knoxville. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, and of course, I am technically a pal, uh, but when I made the Facebook page, I just yes, I thought I was going to be a Knoxville at the time. And also that number, that's my cell number. So if you want to, if you want to text me or you know whatever, uh, say hey, can you get this or hey, do you have that? That's fine. The store does have its own phone number. I just didn't have it at the time I got the cards printed. Okay. Uh, What's the store's number? Store's number is eight six five eight five nine 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 six two. Okay. All right. That's that's good stuff, man. So come and check all that uh, all that stuff out at, at the Warp here, and uh, I think you'll find some really cool stuff. Uh, thanks for having us, that man. This is this is awesome, and we just hope you have and come see the gu- success. Come see the guard cats because they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, that uh, if you come in here, you do have to pay the fur tax. Yes, the fur tax, <laughs> uh, which means you are required to pet. Yeah. Oh, because they are lovable cats. They, are, they yeah. just came and 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 They're just like, okay, pet me. Out here. All right. Uh, I'm so, actually surprised they left us alone, plus especially since you have the little fuzzy microphone. Oh cover. yeah, 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 yeah. I thought for sure they would think that was one of their friends. Uh, so them. all you guys out there that listen to it and, and you ladies too, go and and follow the Warp on Facebook. Uh, go to our uh, our Facebook page. Go to our Buzzsprout page. Upper right hand corner will lead you to all of our social media. Please check that stuff out. And you'll hear the advertisement at the end of the show. Go check our Teespring store out. Wes was uh, sporting one of our masks today. Uh, f- uh, for COVID, you can uh, you can, you can support that, the Nerdy yeah. Old Men podcast. So stay safe. That's right. And uh, until next time, uh, this is the old bald man here with John and his AJ Styles phenomenal T-shirt because he is in fact phenomenal, and so is his store, Redneck West. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.